Hello, welcome back. We are in a new setting today. For some of you OG Coriander Quilts fans, you recognize my sewing space, but I bet it's been probably a year or so since we have filmed here in this space. We have been using the filming studio for the majority of our filming recently, but today, because of my topic, I decided that this was going to be the perfect space for us to film this video because we are filming a wonky log cabin block tutorial. A couple weeks ago when I showed this quilt, I asked you all if you wanted to see a wonky log cabin tutorial. And there was many yeses. I bet there was hundreds of yeses. And even some of you who are familiar with how to make this block said, yes, I know how to make that block, but I'd love to see how you make that. So that's what we're doing today. And it's going to involve a lot of sewing and pressing and so this is the right space to be making this block in. If you are unfamiliar with the wonky log cabin block, it's probably, I think I can say with about 99% confidence that as far as pieced blocks go, it's probably about the simplest quilt block that you could make. It doesn't necessarily look like it would be simple. Like when you look at something like that, it looks like it might be a little bit trickier, but it's really not at all. In fact, the first and only quilt my oldest daughter Chloe made was a wonky log cabin quilt. And I have that here to show you. It is this pretty quilt here. And it is such a beginner friendly, easy scrap busting block to make. It is fun, a lot of mindless sewing. So if you are someone who maybe likes to sit and listen to a podcast or watch a TV show while you are sewing, this is the block for you. <laughs> it's going to be so easy. So we're just going to go ahead and dive in. I'm going to show you these quilts up close a little bit better first. Now I will tell you our filming setup is a little bit different up here than it is downstairs. We couldn't move everything up here, but I think this should work out just fine, but it's going to be just a little bit different than what you might be used to. But first let's look at this brightly colored one. Now with wonky log cabin blocks, you can start with whatever shaped center you want. So you'll see we have a several sided piece here that we started with um, over here. This one is a also several sided, but a little bit of a different shape. I know I saw a triangle. Well, here we go. We've got a, I think this is a trapezoid. <laughs> it's been a little while since I've had to think about uh, names of shapes, but this little four sided guy here and then we also have a triangle up here. So you can start with whatever shaped center you want, which makes this a lot of fun. For Chloe's quilt, she did all squares, but they are not um, perfectly sided squares in that the sides are a little slanty, a little crookedy, and that's how they are supposed to be for this block. You don't have to worry about being precise. You will still want to pay attention to your quarter inch seam allowance, but as far as angles, we don't have to worry if we're a little slanty and it just makes for a fun block. So that's a little bit more of how Chloe's quilt looks. And then one more quick peek at the really bright one here both constructed exactly the same. So what is that construction? Let's talk about that. You are going to want to begin with a variety of scraps. I have a bunch of coriander seeds scraps that I just pulled from. Um, this works great for jelly roll strips if you have a jelly roll. In fact, a lot of these strips are just leftover jelly roll strips. Uh, so pull some of those if you have those little teeny sashing strips. These are, let me measure these, one inch, an inch and a quarter sashing strips that were used in a project. These will be great. They do not need to be perfectly straight. So if you have strips that are a little crooked, that's fine. Grab those long strips, short strips, some narrower, some wider. You can choose whatever you want. Just grab from your scraps. I am going to make a couple of these blocks at a time. 
so that I can start with different shaped centers. So you can see how these go depending on what you choose. I like this little guy. This is the blue X print from Coriander Colors. These fabrics will be in quilt shops in June. So not too much longer. I'm gonna use these two. We'll see what we can do with those two as centers. And for one, let's just start with a square, but let's make him a little bit, a little bit less square. I'm gonna move those up a little bit so you can see those better. All right, let's go with something a little like so. Um, yeah, we'll just leave that just like that. And I want to do a triangle. Let's do a triangle for this one. We'll do a wide bottom triangle here. Again, these angles don't have to be anything specific. I'll start with as small or as large of an angle as you might want. So we have triangle and funny little rectangle. And then let's do one more with even more sides to it. Let's take this black here, shove those up there. Let's just go. And you don't even have to use a ruler. If you didn't want to, you technically could just sort of, okay, I'm not even gonna try that because, <laughs> because I start thinking about not using a ruler and things start to seem a little crazy. So I'm gonna use a ruler, but if you are more confident in your non-ruler skills, you wouldn't have to, you could just, sort of cut this up however you wanted to. I'm gonna go like that. Let's take this out this way. This will be a scrap, we'll add up to our scraps and then I'm gonna take this, oh, we'll do like that. Okay, so I have this funny little center and then I have a triangle and then my little funny rectangle. We construct these the same way that we would log cabin blocks. So you're just going to grab some pieces that are going to fit on one side. This one I think is gonna be, oh, well, maybe he'll fit here. Yeah, he will fit just fine on this side. So I am going to sew those together on this side right here. Um, as far as this piece, let's do something a little bit skinnier. I'm gonna choose this guy right here and I'm gonna sew him to this side. Now I'm gonna trim this up just a little bit with my scissors before I take that over to my sewing machine, just so it's not so long. So that doesn't have to be anything fancy. So I'm gonna be sewing on this side right here. And then for this one, let's see if I can find a polka dot. We'll start with this polka dot here. And actually I'm gonna, narrow this up. Now you can make these narrower at this step, but you can also wait until you have sewn some sides on and then trim things up as you're going. Either way is fine. So I'm just gonna trim that up a little bit. We'll just add that back to my scrap pile. And then that's just a little too skinny for me, so I'll get rid of that. And then I'm gonna sew this onto this side right here because that's one of my longer sides. So I'm gonna sew that on there. So that's where I'm sewing on this one. I'm sewing this side here and I'm sewing this side right here. So as you can see, this is a pretty loosey goosey sort of process. You, um, not a lot of rules with making these blocks. Stick with that quarter inch seam allowance and then we are going to add these and I'm going to add a round just like you would with a traditional log cabin block, but you don't even have to follow those guidelines. And as I make these blocks, I might find that I am going to add things in a different order than you typically would for log cabins. But I'm gonna go up to the sewing machine, I'm gonna show you how to sew these on and then show you the next couple steps for these. All right, we are just sewing these together using a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm just gonna chain piece all of these. So I've started with that blue rectangle. Next we'll go with the triangle. I've left a little bit of overhang on that top side and the bottom side. You're gonna find that when you have these kind of crazy angles that sometimes they're gonna fall how you want them to and other times they're gonna fall a little bit unexpectedly. So. Keep that in mind as you are sewing. You might find that you like to leave a little bit of overhang. And this one here, 
I'm actually going to switch this and go this short side, the narrower side at the top, and leave the wider side at the bottom. And we will sew this one here too. Now we'll keep going. All right, I've got everything attached. The next thing that you're going to want to do is either go to your iron, which is what I'm going to do, and press everything away from the center on all of these sides. Or you could finger press, give them a real good finger press. Or if you have one of these handy little fabric rolling devices and you wanted to set something up beside your sewing machine, that would be a great option too. But you do want to give these a real nice press away from the center. My preference is always going to be a nice firm press with an iron, but uh, there, we do have other options. Now I am going to go over to my iron and I'm going to press all of these nicely and then show you the next step. This is what these pieces are going to look like after I have pressed everything. I'll flip them to the back so you can see what we are working with and then back to the front. The next step that we're going to want to do is trim up whichever side it is that we are going to want to sew onto next. So for this piece right here, I'm going to sew right here next. So I want to just get rid of this overhang and I'm just going to carry on this black line just as if it went up through the polka dots there. So something like this. But if you wanted to, you could adjust this angle um, differently. You wouldn't have to follow that black edge all the way up through, but that's what I'm gonna do. And then save that because you can probably use that as well. And then you're gonna be sewing onto this line right here. And I've got this little gray here. I'm gonna give him a quick press here. And I'm going to sew this onto this piece here. I am not going to trim this up any differently at this point in time. And I'm going to sew it just like that. So that's ready to take to the sewing machine. We'll do the same thing for this piece. I'm going to sew onto the bottom next. So I'm going to trim this up here. That's just going to be a scrap we're going to throw away. And then I need a piece that will run along this edge. Oh, this is a fun little stripe. Doesn't quite reach, but I'm going to use that anyways. But I am going to cut it a little bit smaller. Let's do something like that. Save that piece. And then I'm going to sew this one right about like that. These are going to be some happy, happy scrappy blocks. That's for sure. All right. And for this piece here, this is already looking pretty nice and straight, so I'm just going to add on to that side. And what do we want here? Are you long enough? Yeah. So let's just go ahead and use that piece right there. That fits pretty nicely. So I am going to go over to the sewing machine again, and I'm going to be sewing onto these sides this time. And then I'm going to come back, press and repeat exactly what you've seen. So let me walk over to the sewing machine to show you that step again, and then we will do pressing, trimming, and then choosing fabrics for that next side. All right, let's just go ahead and get started sewing these. As I said, it's pretty mindless sewing. We don't have to match any seams. We really want to pay attention to the quarter inch seam allowance so that we don't get any unexpected narrow seams that don't work out. But aside from that, these blocks are, are nice and simple to sew together. All right, got that next side added onto all of these. And I will go press them and show you what we're working with now. This is what we have now after everything has been pressed and we're ready to add on to the next side. I'm gonna start with this one here. And again, I'm gonna trim first, kind of get a nice straight side to add on to. And let's add some orange here. I'm gonna choose this little guy here, trim that up. And I'm going to add that 
that right there. For this one here, let's make a nice straight line so that we can sew something right down on this side here. So I am going to move that over and trim this something, something like that so that I can add right there. So now I've got a nice straight line to add right here. And let's choose one of these little gray guys. Press that up a little bit. And trim just a hair. And then we'll add that onto that side. And then for this last one, this one's fun because really I could add on to any of the sides I wanted to. I'm gonna trim this right here. I don't wanna go too crazy on this angle, so I think I'm actually gonna do it about like this. One thing to think about as you are building these blocks is that we are aiming for something square. So you don't want to let your, your shapes get too skewed that it becomes hard to get everything square. So kind of keep that in mind as you're choosing where you want to add your pieces. Uh, try to keep things kind of equal as you build, at least to some degree. Now for this one, I wanted to show you something fun that you can do. I have a piece, ah, here it is. So one thing that you can do is if you have small pieces that you wanna to sew together to make something longer, you can. So I sewed these two pieces together so I can add them in kind of a fun way like so. And I'm just gonna sew it right like that actually. So those are gonna to go together like that. And this is a great way to use up some of those smaller pieces. You can just sew them into longer strips and just add them into your block wherever you would like to. These are now ready to be sewn and I will go over to the sewing machine and do just that. And now here is what these three look like. So this one, the center has been completely framed out and we're ready to continue adding round number two. And then these two, this one needs one more row to complete framing out the center. This one is gonna take just a couple more rows until we can frame this one out. So let's start with this one again. And then I'm going to be adding onto this side right here. Let's do, what else do we have down here in my little pile of goodies? I want something I haven't used yet. Ooh, a purple stripe, that's fun. So let's go ahead and add that to that side. I am gonna trim that up just a little bit, like so. And again, you wouldn't have to trim at that step. I'm just opting to do so before I add the side on. So that one is ready to go. We need one more side for this one. Oh, maybe we'll do that red polka dot. Let's see what I've got here. Let's straighten this up a little bit. go and then we will add this red polka dot. I don't want it to be too skinny so I am going to add it like that right there. And then I will trim this up. Which do I want to add on next? We'll come here. And what color shall we choose? Maybe some orange. That's fun, so we'll add orange here. Trim that up a little bit. And sew that onto that side right there. So I will sew those, press those, and then show you what we're working with at this point. And here's where we're at now. This one has been completely framed out around the center, as has this one, plus the first strip of the second round. We still have two more to go to frame out the center of this block here. You can see how we are going to continue building on these pieces. I am going to go ahead and make a few more rounds of each of these blocks and then pop back in and show you what we are working with. But I think you're getting the idea of how these work, how you just keep building and building until you have close to the size that you want and then you just trim it down. This means that this block is very versatile in how 
small or how big you make them. If you have a six and a half inch square ruler that you want to make six and a half inch blocks, you just keep building until your six and a half inch square ruler fits right on top trim your block out, you have a six and a half inch square block. If you want something bigger, 12 and a half inches. If you have a 12 and a half inch square ruler, keep building it out in all directions until your 12 and a half inch square ruler completely fits within your block, trim your perimeters, and you'd have a 12 and a half inch square block. Of course, you can trim these using other sorts of rulers, but if you have those square rulers, it makes it so easy to trim at the end. I am going to, as I said, keep building mine and touch base here and just a little bit. All right, I've been sewing for maybe 15 to 20 minutes or so. I've added a number of rounds to all of my centers and one of the blocks is ready to get its final trim. So I wanted to be sure and show you that. I'm going to be trimming all of these to eight and a half inches square. If I wanted to go bigger, I would just keep adding rows until it got closer to where I needed it to be. As you start nearing the size that you are aiming for, you're going to want to take your ruler and see where you might need to continue adding fabric and where you might have enough fabric already. So when I put my eight and a half inch ruler here, I can see that I have just enough if I were to trim this um, just enough. It just covers on either side here and I have enough room on both the top and bottom as well. You do want to be careful when you are trimming that you don't end up with really skinny little seams. You can make do if that happens, but it's not ideal. So if I move this up a little bit, that gives me more space up here. And then I still have a nice amount of space here. If I angle that just a little bit more, it doesn't get quite as tight over here on this side as well. So this could be trimmed right here to eight and a half inches. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. The center on this one was the square. And so it got a little bit less crazy as some of the other blocks. I will show you those here in just a minute. The more square shaped your center is when you start the easier it is to kind of keep these square shaped as you are adding the rows. So that is what this block looks like trimmed to eight and a half inches square. And then it would be ready to be sewn into whatever project I wanted to use this for. Let me show you the other blocks that we are looking at. So as you can see, much less square shaped than the one that started with the square center. So I do have to pay attention to where I am adding the fabric. And at this point in time, I did grab the eight and a half inch ruler down so that I could see kind of where I might be short at. And it looks like I'm gonna need just a little bit more um, kind of around these two sides here. So that's where I'm gonna be focusing on this block. While I have this one here, I did wanna show you something about trimming trimming these up as we get some of these strips added. So you might come to, a point like this in your block where you want to add right here. And if you trim, you will be able to come all the way down into this yellow strip. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. Now, if we were to place our ruler and trim something like this right here, we would only be able to add onto this pink edge and the aqua edge, but it wouldn't extend down into this yellow part. But if we angle our ruler just a little bit, we wanna make sure that we are paying attention to that intersection right there, that we don't have any um, fabric missing, but we have a continuous line. And if I trim like this, I'll be able to sew a strip all the way down. So I am going to do that right here. And then I can add a strip right down here along that whole side. So I wanted to show you how to do that when you start to get some of these crazy strips everywhere. I will, well, let me just choose my fabric. Let me see if I have something long enough. Sure enough, I think we will use that blue. Well, maybe I have, we don't have as much red in this block, do we? Let's go with red instead. I'm gonna add that to that side. And then this guy over here, let's see how he is shaping up with that eight and a half inch ruler. You'll wanna do this periodically as you start to get closer so you know where you need fabric. It's looking like if I add a nice chunk over here on this side, that's gonna get me going in the right direction. So I'm going to trim this even. 
and I'm going to add right here. And what do we want? This one here looks like a nice choice. So I will add that to this side. And then once I get ready to trim these up square, I will meet you back here. All right, and these crazy little guys are now ready to be trimmed to eight and a half inch square. As you can see, they're a little bit crazier than the one that started with a square center. I will tell you when you are starting with a center that is less square than, than um, an actual square, that you will end up with more scrap waste as you go. If that concerns you, start with something a little bit more square or just really pay attention as you're adding your rounds. Keep comparing it to your finished block and make sure that everything is kind of the same size all the way around to eliminate some of that scrap waste. You'll see what I am talking about here as we get ready to trim this. I'm gonna lay this here so that everything falls within my ruler. Now I could trim it right here. Everything is, there's fabric underneath my entire ruler, but this little purple bit right here, I don't care how that is, I don't care for how that is lining up right there. So I'm gonna try to slide that over just a little bit so I have something a little bit different right there. I think something like this I'm happy with, so I'm gonna go ahead and trim this here. Now you will see all of my little scraps that I'm gonna be left with as I trim this. Save those, you can use those for more of these blocks. A lot of those pieces are very usable at, that, at this point in time. I'll trim the other two sides. And see, a, a lot of nice sized pieces right there. So save those. You can always use those for future blocks. That is how this block is going to look. And then we'll trim up this final one right here. Now, some of you might be wondering, or maybe you hadn't even thought about it at all, about bias edges for these blocks, because I am not worrying about which way the fabric is running when I am trimming these. So some of these edges could be a little bit stretchier than other edges, so do be aware of that. Um, it's a pretty straightforward to go ahead and sew these into a block, so you shouldn't run into problems because we're trimming everything exactly um, eight and a half inches, so they're all gonna fit together really nicely. But do pay attention when you start sewing these together, if you're trimming them in this manner, that you're not doing a lot of stretching and tugging as you are assembling your quilt top or whatever project you might be making with them. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and trim this one up yet. See how this looks. Okay, I think that looks good right there. Got fabric underneath my whole ruler. We'll trim those away. I have a Tigsy just out of sight of the camera. He's really considering jumping up onto my cutting board. We'll see if he makes an appearance or not checking things out behind me. He always likes a good fabric sniff. <laughs> All right, so that is what this final block looks like right here. So you can see now what all of the blocks look like here. And then you could sew these into a table runner. These would make really fun pot holders. You can use them in a project of your choosing. You could continue making blocks and assemble them into a larger quilt. They do make beautiful quilts, as you saw at the beginning of this video, Chloe's quilt, as well as the one that I just finished up a couple weeks ago. Super simple blocks, a lot of fun, mindless sewing. Sometimes it's fun to have these sorts of projects in and around some of the other projects that might require a little bit more thinking. So, oh, there he comes. We knew it was only a matter of time, didn't we? There he is. It's been really pretty in Ohio the last couple of weeks. That iron is on, Tixie. I don't know how close you wanna get there. It's been really pretty here in Ohio, so he's been spending a lot of time outside but he has graced us with his presence. And there he is. <laughs> it had been a while since he had been in a video and I keep getting asked when he doesn't show up for a while, how's Tixie doing? I try to make sure and post some pictures of him over on my blog so you at least get some photos of him here and there when he's out on his wilderness wanderings, but 
he just came inside just now. And so here he is. This is a pretty typical thing for him to do when I'm working at my cutting table. He likes to make sure and sprawl in front of the whole thing, completely covering everything that I'm working on so that I really can't even attempt to keep going. But <laughs> we were just wrapping up this video. So I think his timing was perfect. If you have any questions about these blocks, anything I mentioned that didn't make sense or something you, you wish I had clarified a little bit further, be sure to let me know. I hope you've enjoyed a little peek into how to make a wonky log cabin block. They are a lot of fun to make, not hard at all, and a great way to use those scraps. So thank you so much for stopping by and I will catch you again next time.